Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the fifth module of um, microcontroller and embedded system. In this uh, topic we have, in this module we have just one topic which is uh, real-time operating system and integrated development environment. Even if you don't uh, study this module, uh, you can uh, still write from your own words because most of the topics which uh, is present in this module we have already seen in operating system. So consider watching this video as a revision of what we have studied. So it will not be any uh, new topic. So very few uh, new topics will be there. I'll be just going uh, through the many technical things are there here. So if you wish to watch like as a revision, then only watch. Otherwise, you already know these concepts um, through the operating operating system subject. Okay. And if you like the video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel firstly uh, let's uh, discuss the operating system basics the what is operating system basically see here these are the system resources like cpu and the storage memory storage and all and these are the applications which are run on computer okay in between the um, data and the cpu time uh, and the applications we have operating system okay what does operating system does is see um, there is an increasing need for time critical response for task and event time uh, time critical means we need responses quickly means uh, we need the output quickly so what does operating system does is it acts as a bridge between the user application and system resources it makes the uh, outputs faster okay so how it does that uh, will uh, how it does that we'll look at uh, the upcoming topics so mainly uh, os system manages the system resources means the memory and the files and the time and uh, input output and so on okay so the faster operating system manages these things the and the more faster and efficient will be the output which you get okay so operating system does the main thing of uh, managing the resources it also does uh, many other tasks but we'll be focusing on managing the system resources okay so there are uh, memory management which uh, we store in the memory our data that is getting managed so that the uh, process of writing the data and reading from it becomes faster and the second one is process management process means uh, for a single task there will be many process right uh, many process running simultaneously so if there is some data here to be accessed which process will access the uh, access this data first if two or more process need the data and which process should run first and how much time it should take to execute its uh, task so these all things uh, should be managed otherwise there will be many conflicts so this is achieved by operating system the third one is time management time management means each process uh, how much time it should be given that will be managed by uh, the operating system the next one is file system file is the subset of memory in the files you'll have organized amount of data here so that will be managed by the um, operating system and the last one is input output uh, system management at the same time see here this is the computer here at the same time we are uh, giving the input through the keyboard and the mouse and also at the same time we are able to see the output so this should be managed very efficiently and that is achieved by operating system okay so these are some of the um, types of management by opera uh, operating system and um, as uh, the as the heart is for the human the kernel is for the operating system kernel is the core of the operating system without kernel operating system won't work okay see you can consider the kernel as this part here which is like uh, you can consider the what is the position of ceo in a office right that's the uh, as the kernel in the operating system and kernel has many tasks uh, basically what it does is it acts as an abstraction layer between system resources and user application this means that the memory and the application which are the final product in between that the operating system is there and mainly the kernel is it gives the address to the other uh, devices what uh, it has to be done what task has to be executed those things are decided by kernel okay and this all we discussed now only the process management memory management file management and input output management and coming to uh, protection system means uh, what's data in the uh, system is to be kept safe okay so kept, uh, keeping safe means if any other user comes from the external means um, from the outside world if any uh, user comes and tries to access the data it should not be given the permission so this permission grant or um, not granting is uh, de uh, decided by the operating system okay and not only users the pros uh, the processes should also be um, authorized first um, before they access the data because through process only the users will be able to access the data okay so that is done by the protection system and sometimes uh, like uh, you can consider an example of a ceo in office sometimes you have to come um, do some important task at that time ceo will be in his cabin and doing the important task 
at that time he should not be interrupted by the other employees to uh, handle the, the handle their issues okay so he should be given the time to perform his important task okay how this is achieved is there will be some other person standing outside the cabin like a manager or a security person who will be uh, uh, not allowing other employees to enter into the room okay so this is the same thing with the kernel sometimes kernel will have to uh, perform some important task at that time other devices should not make a call to the kernel okay like uh, for example if any page fault happens or some damage to the memory happens at that time kernel will give the uh, decision means what has to be done at that time but when kernel is uh, performing some important task at that time this um, interrupt is disabled okay for achieving that we will be using interrupt handler interrupt handler is like a manager in office or a security person who will not allow the other uh, persons to contact the CEO same way the other devices are uh, not allowed to call make a call to the kernel while kernel is uh, making some imp uh, while doing some important task okay that's the function of interrupt handler the second thing which we need to know is kernel space and user space kernel space means kernel's code is located at the kernel space and user application are located at the uh, user space okay that's the only difference and there are two types of kernel monolithic and micro kernel see the uh, monolithic will be like this it will have many uh, spaces to execute different modules of the kernel okay so you can consider this as a multi programming whereas micro kernel is uh, doesn't uh, does not execute anything but other inputs which it uh, receives that it will facilitate to the other outputs okay so micro kernel is uh, just facilitates the execution of programs whereas in monolithic the actual execution happens okay two types of operating system general purpose and real time operating system in general purpose it used for all kinds of applications and in the day to day life and the second one is real time where it produces the outputs based on the real time inputs this you can consider example of uh, watching a match or uh, breaking news and the second one is uh, the there are two types of real time operating system and this one is the main topic of this module real time operating system and there are two types hard real time and soft real time this is used for home application like voice recognition and this one is used for the live matches and the events task process and threads task means it's uh, it refers to something that's need to be done okay it means it's a uh, part of a process like whatever is a task it uh, has to be done okay and the process is a program or a part of its execution okay so if this is a program here a process is a part of its execution and task is uh, nothing but the process itself okay and process is implemented using stacks and by using stack pointer and program counter where we'll have the order of the process execution means process p1 should be executed first then uh, p2 then p3 and so on okay for this uh, the stack is used and there are two types of uh, process first one is virtual processor and second is physical processor virtual processor for virtual memory and physical processor for physical memory and the process is divided into three parts stack memory data memory and the code memory here the uh, process executions order is stored here the data is stored on which the process acts on and the code memory is the code for executing the process okay and process creation termination is not a, a single step operation there will be many uh, stages which the process passes through and this is known as process life cycle so see here when the process is created it goes to the ready state when it's ready for the execution of program then it goes to the running state when the process is getting executed if it's completed it will be here in this state now else if it's waiting for any input or output from the user or uh, any other uh, reason which causes the waiting of the process it will be in the block state then after the block state gets over it gets cleared it goes to the ready state again okay so this is the process life cycle see here the different stages are created state it enters when uh, it, uh, it enters when the process is created and ready state when it's waiting for the process uh, processor to be executed processor for execution and running state is when it's being executed and block and waiting uh, waiting state is temporary suspension or waiting for getting access to a shared resource or any input output operation and completed state is when the process completes its execution thread is a sequence of execution of program see here this is the main process here it will be having many threads for some running simultaneous um, tasks okay like if the task is to display an image into the screen at that time uh, the different threads can be fetching the image from the memory and then processing that image and then displaying on the screen this uh, this three can happen simultaneously okay this is known as multi-threading and in multi-threading the task and the process code memory and data memory is shared between the different uh, threads here and each thread will have its own stack and register and uh, code, to be, uh, code to be performed will be written in each uh, thread okay so this is the structure of uh, multi-threading 
threads is one of the three threads of the um, operating system. It's a type of the thread which is portable and the uh, full form is portable OS interface. It's used for the real time uh, extensions. Okay, it's used in the real time operating system and it uses a library called pthread for creating and managing the threads and the syntax is as follows. Okay, so if there's a task here, if you want to execute that, firstly, we have to create the thread. So this is the syntax here. We'll be having four uh, uh, parameters, pthread uh, t, pthread attribute, start function and arguments. What does the, uh, this function do? It creates a new thread for running the start function. This is the function which is to be performed and arguments are nothing but the, if you have to add two numbers, then uh, two numbers will be passed here and the start function is addition. Okay, and pthread uh, t is the handler to handle the newly created thread and pthread attribute is what type of data we are performing the operation on like for adding two numbers it can be uh, int okay so it uh, specifies the data type of the thread okay next one is thread preemption thread, pre uh, thread preemption means uh, what does preemption mean suppose that a process is performing its task it can be stopped at any point of time and let other processor uh, execute its task that's known as preemption if it happens with the thread it's known as thread preemption okay this is all about the thread preemption now we'll be discussing what are the different types of threads the first one is the user level thread in user level thread it will be performing the user applications and we cannot preempt it means unless the user a user performs its own task uh, fully and completes it it cannot be um, interrupted in the middle and stopped okay it cannot be done that so that's the user level thread the next one is kernel level thread see kernel cannot be like non preemptive because there are many multiple tasks to be performed at the same time so kernel is preemptive okay and the next one is many to one means if many user threads are performing a single kernel level thread it's known as many to one the second one is one to one means one user level to one kernel the third one uh, the last one is many to many means many user levels are performing many kernel level threads okay the next topic is multiprocessing and multitasking. Multiprocessing means the ability to execute multiple processes simultaneously. So suppose that P1 is here, P2 is here, P3 is here. At the same time, many processes are executing simultaneously by using multiple CPUs. This is known as multiple processing. The second is multiprogramming. Multiprogramming is the ability to have multiple programs in the memory. So suppose that this is the memory here, we'll be having multiple programs here, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, and P, uh, P6. These are waiting for the uh, processor to execute them, okay? This is known as multiple programming, multi-programming. The last one is multitasking. Multitasking means the ability to switch from one task to the another. This is the most important one, which we'll be discussing in more detail, okay? So suppo uh, suppose that there are three uh, tasks here, A, B, and C, okay? What happens is A will be given one microsecond, B will, give, uh, B will be given one microsecond, C will be given one microsecond. After it gets over, A will resume its task, then B, then C. Then each will be given one microsecond, then again it will be changed. So it happens so fast that it all looks like it. Uh, these three tasks are getting executed parallelly, okay? So there are three things which uh, multitasking involves. The first one is context switching. Means from A to B, it's getting switched, right? So it's known as context switching. The next one is content saving. Since A is performed only partially, its content is uh, saved and then resumed at a later point of time. That's the content saving. The third one is context retrieval. Con uh, context retrieval means um, once this task is over, at that time it has to retrieve the uh, resumed task from the uh, previous point of uh, how much it was done. That's known as con uh, content retrieval. Now, depending on how a switching is implemented, there are uh, three types, uh, which is first one is cooperative multitasking. So for example, consider here process P1, it has this much task to be executed and process P2 has this much task to be executed, okay? Now process P1 is executing in this type, which is cooperative multitasking, it can execute for how much time it wants. But what it does is it gives the chance to other processor to execute its task at the same time, okay? So it pauses here, this one gets executed and this one will reduce here, uh, resume here, okay? So this is known as cooperative multitasking. The second one is preemptive multitasking. If a process is um, um, executing, it doesn't have the right to execute uh, for the full time, okay? It can be anytime stopped and let the other process execute its task, okay? So that is preemptive. And the th third one is non-preemptive. Non-preemptive means if one task is executing, it cannot be stopped in the middle. It has to complete its full task, okay? But there can happen multitasking when uh, this process is waiting for the I.O. operation, wherein it will release the CPU. When it's waiting for the I.O. operation, at that time it will release the CPU. When CPU is released, for, uh, when CPU is released 
for this amount of time at that time the cpu can be used by the other process okay so this uh, in this way non preemptive can also be used in multitasking okay these are the three types and task scheduling means see if there are the task t1 t2 and t3 which task is to be given how much amount of time to execute and which is to be executed first that is known as task scheduling scheduling the task for the execution okay so there are many algorithms which will be using for deciding which task is to be executed first and for how much amount of time okay so while uh, deriving uh, while deriving the uh, algorithms what we consider is cpu utilization throughput turnaround time waiting time and response time we'll be discussing each of these in detail by considering different scheduling algorithms task scheduling algorithms are divided mainly into two parts first one is non preemptive which cannot be interrupted in middle if one process starts it will do till the end of its process okay that's non preemptive the second is preemptive means if one process starts it can be stopped at the middle and the other process can execute okay that's preemptive so in each of these we have uh, different types first one is fifo which is first come first serve and uh, second one is lifo which is last come first serve and the third is shortest job first and the fourth one is priority based so let's uh, discuss the first one which is first come first serve consider an example here and uh, in preemptive we have the um, sjf which is uh, shortest job first also called as shortest remaining time and round robin and uh, priority based okay so let's uh, discuss each one of uh, each one by one the first one is first come first serve which is non preemptive means once the process starts it cannot be stopped until it completes its task okay so the three process with the process id is p1 p2 and p3 with the execution times 10 and 5 and 7 milliseconds so let's uh, make it uh, somewhat interesting like uh, consider an example of p1 p2 and p3 as you are p1 your friend is p2 and your another friend is p3 all three come to a birthday party okay at that time the rule is only one time a person can enter and eat the cake okay so so you are the slowest at eating the cake you take 10 milliseconds to eat the cake and the other person takes 5 seconds and the third person takes 7 seconds okay so what happens is you come first then your uh, second friend and then uh, then your third friend comes okay so according to this algorithm what happens is what uh, we have to calculate the average waiting time and turn around time so let's uh, begin this uh, program so first uh, you come right at that time uh, you will enter this room and you will enter the uh, you will uh, eat the cake for 10 milliseconds okay you will take 10 seconds to eat the cake and then you will come out of this room your friend p2 and p3 will wait for you okay then p2 goes in p2 takes 5 seconds to eat then it comes out okay so p3 goes in at the last okay then it eats for 7 seconds and it comes out now we have to calculate the waiting time and um turn around time now waiting time means how much time you waited did you wait for any time no right because when uh, you came at that time only you got the entry you went first and ate the cake okay so your waiting time is zero okay p1's waiting time is zero the second is p2 p2 waited for you uh, for 10 milliseconds to you uh, when, when you were eating the cake so p2's waiting time is 10 milliseconds and p3 p3 waited for the most which means uh, first p1 ate for uh, 10 milliseconds then p2 wait uh, ate for 5 milliseconds so it waited totally for 15 milliseconds after 15 milliseconds when p1 and p2 was over then p3 came and ate uh, p3 came and ate the cake okay so p3's waiting time is 15 milliseconds okay so these three calculate add it and divide by 3 we'll get the um, average waiting time which is 8.3 okay so that is waiting time turn around time means it's not just about waiting it's also about how much time you take to eat the cake for example for uh, if you calculate the uh, turn around time for p1 how much time p1 waited 0 millisecond how much time it uh, took to eat the cake it took 10 milliseconds so 0 plus, uh, plus 10 is 10 milliseconds okay this is the turn around time for p1 what is for p2 p2 waited for how much time 10 milliseconds and how much time it took to eat the cake 5 milliseconds so total time uh, turn around time will be 15 millisecond for p2 for p3 it will be how much time it waited 15 milliseconds and it took time to eat is 7 milliseconds so turn around time for p3 will be 22 milliseconds okay add these three values divide by 3 we'll get the average turn around time okay the second birthday party last come first serve here the you and your two friends come to a birthday party but uh, what happens is you already start eating the cake okay so here you you have already started eating the cake so you are not in the queue okay now uh, p2 is there and p3 is there in this order it uh, arrives so p2 will be here and p3 will be here this is last come first serve so what happens is 
the uh, the friend which came the last will uh, will be given the opportunity to eat the cake first okay so p3 will start eating the cake after you finish the cake okay but what happens is p4 also arrives before p1 gets over okay p4 arrives and sits here means the fourth friend arrives and it sits um, after p3 okay so it will be given the first priority to eat the cake after you finish the cake which is p1 after it uh, executes its uh, task p4 will be able to execute its task okay now um, what happens is after p1 will be over then p4 will come then uh, p4 will be over then p3 will come then at last p2 will come okay so this is the order p1 p4 p3 and p2 so if you see in the diagram it will be like this p1 will eat for 10 milliseconds then p4 takes 6 milliseconds to eat so it will eat for till 16 milliseconds then p3 will eat for uh, 7 milliseconds then p2 will eat for 5 milliseconds so let's calculate the average waiting time how much time you waited you already were eating so you have no waiting time that is 0 milliseconds then what is about p4 how much time p4 waited see in the question it's given that uh, p4 came at 5 milliseconds okay so when uh, p1 was executing at 5 milliseconds p1 came so its waiting time starts from here p1 to uh, 5 to 10 means 5 milliseconds it waited see p4 came at this point and its execution started from this time so it waited for 5 milliseconds so p4's waiting time is 5 millisecond what about p3 p3 waited for 16 milliseconds and what about p4 p4 waited for 23 milliseconds all right now uh, we have got all the values here for p1 it's 0 since you are already eating and the p4 is 5 uh, it arrived at 5 seconds and started eating at uh, 10 milliseconds and um, p3 is 16 so it waited for 16 milliseconds and finally p2 is 23 add these four values and divide by 4 to get the average waiting time what about turnaround time turnaround time means in addition to waiting how much time you will eat also that's also calculated so how much time you waited 0 how much time you took to eat that is 10 so your turnaround time is 10 millisecond what about p4 how much time it waited 5 milliseconds how much time it uh, took to eat it took 6 milliseconds to eat 5 plus 6 which is 11 okay then the next one p3 it waited 16 and uh, 8 for 7 that means 23 what about p4 it waited for 23 and 8 for 5 that is 28 so these four values which are 10 11 23 and 28 divided by 4 to get the average turnaround time now let's change the rules of the birthday party in this uh, who will eat the cake first they will be given the opportunity to eat the cake first okay now you your friend and your other friend is there but now you will be given the last opportunity because you eat very slowly okay so your p2 friend will be given the first opportunity see here p2 will be given the first opportunity so it will eat the cake first then p3 then at last you will eat okay so your waiting time will be uh, 12 milliseconds you will wait for the other two friends whereas for uh, p3 it will be 5 it will wait for just uh, p, uh, p2 and for p2 it will be first because it eats the cake very fast okay so here the waiting time will be uh, the average of these three values and the turnaround will be the same thing how much uh, p2 waited plus how much it how much uh, it uh, took to eat and how much p3 waited and how much uh, it took to eat and uh, p1 how much you waited and how much time you took to eat okay that will be calculated and uh, divided by 3 to get the turnaround time in this birthday party will have the priorities okay zero is the highest priority and three is the lowest priority you will have the priority zero and the p2 friend will have the priority three and the p3 friend will have the priority two okay so you have the highest priority you will go and eat the cake first so your uh, uh, your time will be from 0 to 10 and your p3 friend has the priority 2 which will be eating from uh, 10 to 17 and p2 will have the priority 3 so it will eat from 17 to 22 calculate the uh, waiting time and the average waiting time uh, as follows like uh, how much time you waited 0 and how much time p3 waited 10 how much time p2 waited 17 add and divide by 3 to get the average waiting time same thing for turnaround how much time you ate and waited how much time p3 waited and ate how much time uh, p2 ate, uh, waited and ate add the 3 and divide by 3 to get the average turnaround time you and your friends have enjoyed a lot now the game changes totally it's preemptive now preemptive means uh, if you got the opportunity to eat you will not eat till the cake finishes you can be stopped at the middle and other process can be other your friend can eat the cake okay so this is the rule now so the thing is who will eat the cake fastest they will be given the first uh, chance to eat the cake okay so among you and your friends you take 10 seconds to eat p2 takes 5 seconds and p3 takes 7 seconds who is the fastest among your friends p2 
So P2 will be given the opportunity to eat the cake. It's eating the cake here from 0 to 2. But what happens is at 2 milliseconds, see here, P2 takes total 5 seconds to eat. Okay. It has ate for 2 seconds. That means total remaining time for P2 is 3 seconds. At this time, what happens is your fourth friend, which is P4, he comes and says that I can eat the cake in 2 seconds. 2 is less than 3. So P4 has to be given opportunity to eat the cake now. Right. So P4 will be given the opportunity and P2 will stop the cake and he will wait for P4 to eat the cake. Okay. So P4 will eat from uh, 2 to 4 milliseconds and after it gets over, then P2 will resume its cake. Okay. Then it will finish its uh, cake in 3 milliseconds. Then P3 will eat the cake for 7 milliseconds and then you will come and eat the cake at last. Okay. So this is the uh, scenario. So what's the uh, waiting time and uh, turnaround time? Waiting time is we'll pick up each uh, person here and see how much time the person has waited. Okay. Then we'll add the waiting time and divide by 4. Okay. Now see here, P2 how much time it waited? It waited for 0 second because it was the fastest person to eat the cake. So it was given the first opportunity. It waited for 0 seconds here. But then P4 came and made P2 to stop the um, process. What happened is P2, uh, P2 had to wait for 2 seconds till P4 finishes. So P2's waiting time here is 2 seconds. Then P2 started and finished the cake. So its total time is 0 plus 2 which is 2 uh, milliseconds. P2's waiting time is 2. Okay. Then P4. P4 didn't have to wait for any time because it was faster than P2. It uh, came and eat the cake. Okay. So P4's waiting time is 0. P3 is uh, P3 had waited for uh, 7 milliseconds and P1 had waited for 14 milliseconds. So those are the uh, waiting time for P3 and P4, uh, P3 and P1. Adding and dividing by 4, those uh, 4 values will get the average waiting time. Now for turnaround time, we'll add a, a second parameter which is eating time. P2 waited for 0 seconds here, but it uh, took uh, 2 seconds to eat. So the turnaround time is 0 plus 2. And here he waited for 2 seconds plus 2 and ate for 3 seconds. So the total time is 2 plus 3, 5, 5 plus 2, 7. So turnaround time for P2 is 7 milliseconds. What about P4? He, uh, he didn't wait for any time. So waiting time is 0. He ate for 2 seconds. So 0 plus 2 is 2. This is the turnaround time for P4. Then what is the turnaround time for P3? P3 waited for 7 seconds and then ate it for 7 seconds. So um, 7 plus 7 will give me 14. That is the um, turnaround time for P3. What about P1? P1 waited for 14 and ate for 10. So the um, turnaround time is 24. Okay. Add and divide by 4, you'll get the average turnaround time. Okay. This is the average turnaround time. The round robin, uh, round robin scheduling in this, the P1's waiting time is 4, P2's waiting time is uh, 4, and P3's uh, waiting time is 2. Sorry, not uh, waiting time, the completion time. Okay. It takes um, P1 takes 4 seconds to eat, P2 takes 4 seconds to eat and P3 takes 2 seconds to eat. Here the time will be divided, each will be given a specific amount of time to eat. Okay. So the time which is given to us is 2 seconds. Okay. So first 2 seconds P1 will eat, then it will stop. Then P2 will eat for next 2 seconds, then P3 will eat for next 2 seconds. Who will finish the first? They will um, come out of the um, come out of the room and then the remaining one will be given 2 to seconds okay in this way if we calculate the waiting time and average time the same thing we have to use for the uh, waiting time also p1 how much it waited here uh, it didn't wait for any time then when p1 started again it started from here okay so the waiting time is this much this much it waited this much means 2 plus 2 which is 4 so 0 plus 4 from here to here it is 2 so 2 plus 4 is 6 and 6 is the uh, waiting time for p1 Similarly, we will find for the P2, P3 also, uh, P2 and P3 also, then we will divide by uh, 3 and then uh, we will divide by 3 to get the average waiting time. Turnaround time in addition to waiting time, how much time you took to eat, that will also be considered. Okay. And this is the last one which is uh, priority based scheduling. In this, uh, what happens is the P1, P2 and P3's completion time is 10, 5 and 7 and the priorities are the highest priority is um, 1 in this case. So P1 is the highest priority, then P3 with the priority 2 and then the P2 with uh, priority 3. Okay. So what happens is uh, all will come together, but at middle of the P1's execution, P, uh, P4 comes. Okay. It has priority 0, which is higher than P1. Okay. So let's see how the thing uh, happens here. P1 is executing at 5 seconds when uh, P1 comes. At that time, it will stop the execution since it's preemptive. And P4 will be given the opportunity 
to execute and then p1 will resume and then p3 and then p2 calculate the average waiting time and the uh, turnaround time in the same way and that's it these are the different types of algorithms uh, under this topic the next one is task communication task communication means um, what is task task is a part of a process and communication means the sharing of the data between different process okay so that is task communication so what are the various ways of task communication cooperating process and competing process in cooperating process the data is shared either uh, either through sending the data or uh, sharing the same memory location okay and competing process means only one data will access the uh, data here means it will compete with the other process to access the same data data okay it will not share the data with each other it's like a competitor to each other okay and uh, some cooperation see cooperation can take place through sharing or communication so here are the keywords which you by reading only will get to know what are uh, these keywords mean okay like shared memory message passing remote procedure call sockets pipes uh, memory map object message passing mes uh, message queues mailbox and signaling okay and next one is task synchronization issues i see synchronization means the every process in the computer system should know what is the updates uh, which are happening to the data so that synchronization will be there okay but there are some issues if you don't do the synchronization there can happen to be conflicts okay so the most common co uh, conflicts are racing deadlock live lock and starvation racing means two or more processes accessing the same data okay this condition is known as racing and it can cause errors in the data deadlock is a condition where two or more processes are uh, trying to get the same data and waiting for the other data to be released by the other process okay in this condition no state change will happen by the process the four conditions which favor the deadlock are means uh, in this in the presence of these four conditions only uh, deadlock can occur first one is mutual exclusion that means only one process can hold the data at a time if only one process can hold the data then if other process wants the data they can't get it okay so this can favor the deadlock the second one is hold and wait means a uh, uh, process is holding some data and wanting some other data so in this case if this data hold by the process is needed by other process they can't take it so this will uh, favor the deadlock and the third one is no uh, no resource uh, no resource preemption means if preemption is not there any process can hold the data for as much time as it wants so this can favor deadlock and the last one is circular wait uh, circular wait circular wait means if the process from p0 to pn p0 wants the uh, data hold by p1 p1 wants a data hold by p2 and so on till pn and uh, pn wants a data hold by p0 so this is a circular wait this can also favor deadlock there are many ways to handle deadlock first one is ignoring deadlock ignoring deadlock means making the condition in such a way that the deadlock cannot occur second is to detect and uh, recover deadlock and third one is to avoid deadlock means taking measures to avoid deadlock and uh, the last one is preventing deadlock okay means if deadlock has occurred uh, how can we prevent that in future okay that's the uh, deadlock handling uh, techniques the third one is live lock live lock means it's same to deadlock but the states are changing for example if there are three process here means these are the state one state two and state three if process p1 uh, changes the state from this one to this one then to this one then to this one what happens is it is uh, changing the state but it's uh, coming back to the same state it was in and no useful work is performed but continuous uh, but continuously state of the process is getting changed okay this is known as uh, live lock an example of that is dining philosophers problem Problem, which are discussed in the uh, OS module 2 okay and the last one is starvation starvation means a process p1 wants some data d okay to uh, um, to progress in its uh, process but d is hold by other process so it uh, it is not getting the um, data so it is stuck in a uh, position where it cannot uh, pro uh, progress further this condition is known as starvation okay now uh, what is mutual exclusion through sleep and what is uh, mutual exclusion to sleep and wake up see sleep means if uh this uh, this one data here and uh, process p1 and p2 want the same data okay so process p1 is accessing the data at that time the other process can be made into sleep mode so that they will not interrupt the process p1 and when this access is over means uh, p1 uh, does its task then p1 will wake up all the other process okay so that the other process will access the data and at this time other process will be in sleep mode okay so in, uh, in this case only one process will be able to access the data at a time and their uh, deadlock will be um, prevent the happening of deadlocks okay and the next uh, topic is semaphore semaphore means it's a variable which is either having the value 0 or 1 1 means the process is busy and 0 means the process is not busy by using this variable it will be accessible to all the process okay so if one process p1 is there it's accessing some data here it will be having the semaphore value as 1 okay whenever semaphore value is 1 uh, other process cannot access the same data okay by using this we can avoid deadlocks and there are two types binary semaphores which has the value only 0 and 1 and counting semaphores will have the priorities it can have multiple values 
like one two three and so on okay means which process will access the data first then which one then which one okay so this is given by the counting semaphores the next one is um, how to choose rtos rtos are the real-time operating system so it highly depends on what what type of function you're performing two factors which one is first one is functional requirement means what the uh, system uh, means uh, what application you're building what that application does that comes under functional requirement uh, those requirements which uh, work on the functions performed whereas other one is a non-functional requirement means what is the scope of the object and what is the speed efficiency and the design of the object uh, like uh, are those requirements which are which development design and cost okay so these factors are considered for non-functional requirement looking at both of these factors we will decide what type of rto is best for our uh, system the, uh, the next one is uh, integration of the hardware and the firmware hardware and the firmware means hardware is the physical uh, devices which we can um, which we use to give the commands to the computer and firmware is the um, software which is bit uh, firmware is used between the hardware and the software okay in between the hardware and software is firmware what does firmware do it writes the uh, what code we write here it will convert the code into software level okay so there are three types of conversions which can happen at the out circuit programming we can program the code outside the uh, system with, uh, on which it is being developed it is known as out circuit programming in system programming means which system we are developing the code there only will write the code okay so that is known as in system programming and the last one is in application programming suppose that we want to make any changes to the application we have at that time we will not make any changes it will uh, reprogram itself okay so this is happening inside the program itself that's known as uh, in application programming the last topic is embedded system development environment see what's an environment environment means uh, the place where you perform the task okay so integrated development environment means an environment where the development happens so what all it uh, what all it uh, consists of it consists of source code editor compiler linker locator and usually debugger okay by using these tools what we can do is we can write the code debug the code and uh, execute the code okay the, so the, uh, that's, uh, that's nothing but IDE, okay. Uh, disassembler means what is an assembler? Assembler means it uh, converts the assembly level language to binary level language. Disassembler does the reverse of it. It converts the binary to assembly level language. Decompiler will uh, convert the high level language to assembly and binary where uh, compiler will do that and whereas decompiler will do the reverse process okay because sometimes what we need to do we need to make changes to the binary level language so this language has to be changed to high level language so we'll make change here which will be compiled again to the binary level okay so that decompiler and uh, disassembler is used and simulator is a software tool used for simulating various conditions for checking the functionality okay so simulator is used for checking the software functionality whereas emulator is a hardware device which, ha which has all the um, functionality of the microchip and it can be used for the hardware purpose if you have to test the software we'll use simulator if you have to check the hardware we'll use emulator okay what is debugger um, a debugger is an application which diagnizes the code and points out the errors okay so by using debugger we can know where the error has happened and by using that we can uh, correct the error okay so then uh, so mainly there are two types first one is hardware debugging which deals with monitoring of the various bus signals and checking the status of each target hardware okay means the hardware devices and the bus signals will be checked by hardware debugging and the last one which is the firmware firmware means it checks the uh, firmware flow and execution control